talk about what to expect when you are expecting a new puppy. It is such an exciting time, and if you have made the decision to bring a new puppy into your home, I know the excitement. You're picking out names, you are buying them a bed, you are looking up training videos, you are so excited, and it is rightly so an exciting time. Um, we've done everything we can to prepare these puppies and to set them up for success. We have given them a great start on potty training. We've given them a great start on crate training. We've exposed them to so many things before they come home to you. These puppies have a great foundation, but when they come to your home, they are still eight to 10 week old babies, just babies. And you're going to find you're not getting a stuffed animal. You are getting a puppy with personality and needs and a puppy who is learning their world and exploring and needs you to show them pro appropriate behavior. Um, they come to you with a great foundation for potty training. We have trained them to not go to potty where they sleep. They go outside to go potty. They use a potty area. They use a doggy door. These may not be the same ex expectations for your home. You may not have a doggy door. You may expect your puppy to go to a door and wait or ring a bell. Um, that's great. That's okay. We've given them the foundation for you to just catapult off and continue on. That being said, puppies need to go to the bathroom a lot. When I have a new puppy, I've heard it said set an alarm for every hour to take them out. I take a puppy out. If, if they're not in their crate, if they're out playing, I take them out every time I see them sniffing around and about every 10 minutes. Like anytime I think there's a chance that puppy might need to go potty, we're outside. I don't want to give them a chance to have an accident, to fail. I want them to succeed every step. And when we go outside and they go potty, we have a big celebration. Yay, puppy, good job. You went potty, good puppy. We make it as exciting as possible and it's a potty party. Then we come back inside. We play for a little bit. If that puppy starts sniffing around, sometimes they may just be exploring and trying to sniff, but I don't give them a chance. We're back outside. And it wears me out and it is a lot. And I often say, I feel like until that puppy is four months old, I'm the one who's trained. At about four months old, something happens and they gain better bladder control and they can hold it. And they, something, I just feel, Often at four months, something clicks and they can start holding it and they have better control over it. But until four months old, I'm trained and I take that puppy out all the time. And I am in and out and in and out and having those puppy parties and we're doing a great thing. An old school thing that used to be taught and you may have heard from your parents or you may have done this in the past is if a puppy has an accident to rub their nose in it and scold them please don't ever do that. They don't understand. That is very old school thinking. If they've had an accident, if you catch them in the act, you, uh-uh, no. I make that sound a lot, uh-uh. And it's super annoying and it drives people crazy and it drives me crazy, but you know what else? It makes my puppies crazy and they don't like it. And so when I make that sound, they stop what they're doing and they look at me and they stop. I remember my grandpa used to say fooey and I hated that word and it drove me crazy, but dogs don't like it either. So if you catch them in the act of having an accident, great, correct them, uh-uh, no. And you scoop them up and take them outside to finish as much as possible. If you don't catch them, one, you should have been watching your puppy. They should never be out and have an opportunity to have an accident when you don't have your eyes on them. But if it does happen, and it's happened to me, it does happen because we get distracted. If it happens and they have an accident and you don't catch it, you just move on, you clean it up, and you move on. If you scold them later, they have no idea what you're scolding them for. They will get it, it can be super frustrating, but that brings me back to the other thing. If I don't have my eyes on my puppy, they're contained in a crate or a playpen area. If you, my puppy is out 
it has my attention. Um, they have to have your attention. They are exploring what they're allowed to play with, what they're allowed to chew on, where they're allowed to go potty. They need your guidance and direction for all of those things. They don't know. Things that sometimes we think like, well, it's obvious, I give them toys. Why are they chewing on the corner of my coffee table? They don't know. And so we have to be watching so that the minute that mouth touches the corner of the coffee table, ah, and you redirect them to a toy. And they quickly learn. They quickly learn what they're allowed to touch and what they're not. Cords, same thing. All of those kind of things. They're heaven to puppy mouths. And so it's really, really important that we keep them away. It doesn't make our, pub our puppies aren't naughty if they're exploring these things. They're being puppies. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is play biting. Again, it's an exploring thing. They're not naughty if they are biting on your hand. Their teeth are razor sharp and it hurts and it's frustrating, but they're just exploring. They do not have issues with aggression. They are not biters. They are just puppies at this age. Um, they're exploring, they're learning what's allowed to go in their mouth, what's not. We have a zero tolerance policy for our skin in our puppy's mouth. Um, they are never allowed to put their teeth on us. Sometimes in my videos, you'll see a puppy trying to bite me and I am moving my hand away. Um, I don't want them to practice bad behavior. I don't want them to practice and think that that's okay. So another thing that we do when we have a puppy in the house is we keep Nyla bones all over the house. Any place that we might be sitting with a puppy or the puppy might be, we keep a Nyla bone. And if the puppy puts their mouth on us, we pick up the Nyla bone and we redirect, we give them the Nyla bone to chew on instead. They're teething, their mouths hurt, their teeth are coming in, it hurts, it feels better, it gives them relief to chew on something. And if our finger is what's convenient, that's what they're going for. The other thing is, sometimes our fingers, especially if we have children in the home, our fingers and our hands can become toys. They're wagging around, they're moving quickly. Um, and so sometimes we just need to take our hand away and remove that toy from the puppy. Um, the last thing that I found that we can do that helps with play biting is we will gently grab them on the scruff of their neck, pull up the skin similar to the way their mama would carry them around um, and tell them no if they, are, if they won't redirect away from play biting us. Um, and that, that's teaching them in their language, in their terms. Um, and so we will do that kind of as our last resort, never out of anger, never to hurt them, never too harsh, um, gently. You just grab the scruff of their neck and say no, and that will get their attention. Um, but they, play biting is a big thing and they do do it. The other thing is their nails. Their nails are razor sharp. Keep their nails trim for your own safety because they will take chunks out of your arm. It's not them being naughty. It's not them doing anything wrong. They've got these weapons in their mouth and on their paws and we can help them by keeping their nails trim and help make that situation better. Um, the biggest thing with your puppy is just be consistent. Be so, so consistent. Um, one thing I often say, you know, is to make them earn their area. Your puppy may start off with a small pen at your door with a bed in it and um, some water. And as they earn your trust and they don't have accidents and they're not getting into things, you can expand their area, expand their area then to a room, then to two rooms, slowly to the whole house. Um, they know not to go potty where they sleep, but if your house is huge and you are giving your puppy the run of your whole house, that doesn't become where they sleep anymore. Um, they're, where they sleep is a very small area. And so if they have run of your whole house, they don't understand they're going to another room and going potty and it's not where they sleep. So you need to slowly increase that area so that they understand. Um, and as their brains develop and cognitively as they are ready for more, you give them more. Um, I highly recommend working with a trainer. Um, I love Baxter and Bella online. You get 
such great access for a lifetime. I recently had a call with them because I had a setback with one of my dogs and they walked me through it, told me exactly what to do. It didn't cost me anything because I paid my one time lifetime amount. It's incredibly reasonably priced um, with code Cedar Sprout you get 25% off, which makes it less than $200 for a lifetime membership. That's um, training, homework, one-on-one -on -one help, group help. It's so fantastic. You can go at your own speed. Um, I do say, if you're someone who would do well with workout videos, then it's great for you. If you are someone who needs to go to the gym and work with a personal trainer, then I would go work with an individual trainer. Um, but if you have the discipline to do workout videos, that's that's kind of what Baxter and Bella is. Um, they're, they're fantastic, but you have to be disciplined enough to do it on your own and be self-motivated on it with your puppy. Um, I think that's it. Um, your puppies need lots of attention, lots of love. Enjoy them. Um, it gets better and better better when you start off you know the first couple days first couple weeks you've got this really cute puppy but you get tired and it's all new it's like having a new job and you do get tired and I just I plead with you see it through just keep working with that puppy and get in that rhythm and routine together it gets better and better um, I found with Cavapoos in my experience, when they are about a year old, that's kind of when they're more or less adults and you're out of the puppy phase. Um, gradually, as they get to that year, things get easier and easier and better and better. But at that year, there's like a switch and um, they, are, they are dogs. Um, I also notice about six to eight months, you'll see some regression, some teenageness. Um, you may have to limit their area back down. You have, may have to step up your training, work on some stuff. There is nothing or not many things in this world as rewarding as a puppy and a dog and seeing it through and raising that dog to be your companion for the duration of their life and that bond that you have and the joy that they bring. It's it's the best. Um, I wouldn't have done it so many times if it weren't. We love our dogs and every everything they have gotten into, everything they have done, every time I've had to get up to take them out to go to the bathroom has been worth it. And so as you hit those hard points with your puppy, because you will, there will be some hard days, there will be some hard times where you're frustrated, just remember it's worth it. It's so worth it to love these babies. All right, this video has gotten very long. I apologize for that, but I hope that I've given you some good information. Like I said, I'm not a trainer, um, but I'm always happy to answer questions and I'm always happy to tell you what has worked for us um, or to refer you um, out as needed and help you find help. Um, I'm happy to send videos. I'm happy to do whatever I can because I want everyone to have the same joy and enjoyment out of their dogs that we get out of ours. All right, thanks.